A forward opening door separates the cockpit from the cabin. It is bulletproof and fully compliant with rapid decompression requirements. In normal conditions, when the door is closed, the electric locking strikes remain locked. A mechanical override enables the pilots to open the door from the cockpit side. An escape panel enables the flight crew to evacuate the cockpit in case of an emergency when the door is jammed or stuck. This panel can only be removed from the cockpit side by pulling the quick release pins toward the center of the flap and kicking the panel open. The cockpit door locking system CDLS electrically locks and unlocks the cockpit door. This system is mainly composed of a keypad located in the forward cabin near the cockpit door, a cockpit door toggle switch installed on the center pedestal, a control unit and its cockpit door control panel installed on the left-hand side of the overhead panel, and an access request buzzer. Note, depending on the version, an additional and identical control unit with its control panel can be installed on the right-hand side of the overhead panel. Also a cockpit door backup panel will allow the normal or the backup locking system to be activated. Also, this related installed panel location may differ with your cockpit panel configuration. Each cockpit door control unit is in charge of locking or unlocking the door locking strikes upon flight crew action. Unlocking the door in case of cockpit decompression and activating the access request buzzer. Each cockpit door control panel has two pressure sensors enabling rapid pressure variation to be detected. Pressure sensor failure indications and electrical locking strike failure indications. Note. The normal indication for these failure indications is light off. The toggle switch enables the flight crew to lock or unlock the cockpit door following an access request. When the door is not locked or not closed, the open light is on. When the cabin crew has initiated an emergency access request, the open light flashes, waiting for a pilot action. If there is no pilot reaction, after a few seconds, the door unlocks automatically. In case of pressure sensor or electrical strike or control unit failure, the fault light is triggered. The pilot should refer to the QRH in order to apply the related procedure. If the normal control unit has failed, the CDLS can be switched to the backup control unit. For that, the additional locking system switch must be used, as shown. When it is on backup position, the fault light on the normal control panel goes off, and the keypad is inoperative. So, the emergency access is also lost. In this condition, the cabin crew has to use the interphone to perform any cockpit access request. The flight crew has to use the control push button to unlock the door. The keypad enables the cabin crew to request access to the cockpit. There are routine and emergency access. Please click on the video screen to watch the routine and the emergency access procedures. The new reinforced Phase 2 cockpit door meets all existing JAR FAR requirements 
and consists of a new door blade, reinforced attachments, new latching principles and a new door opening logic. This code pad provides increased security levels and is used to notify cockpit crew of a request for entry or to open the door in case of confirmed incapacitation of both pilots. The buzzer in the cockpit, rear of the overhead panel, provides an oral warning to notify the cockpit crew. This door control toggle switch with three positions and associated warning lights is normally installed on the pedestal but can also be located on the overhead panel on request. The CDLS control door locking system is a control box located on the overhead panel which monitors latches and rapid pressure variations in the cockpit. For cockpit evacuation, there's an escape panel that can only be removed from inside the cockpit. Finally, the door is fitted with three electrical latches and a new spy hole. Let's have a look at a normal sequence for routine cockpit access. I'm a bit thirsty. I think I'll call Sally for a glass of water. Do you want something to drink? Yeah, why not? Why don't you ask her to bring a bottle of water with two glasses? Hello, Sally. Could you bring us a bottle of water and two glasses, yes. please? No problem. I bring it. After a few minutes, the purser comes back and needs to access the cockpit. So the purser calls the captain on the interphone. Hello? Captain, here's your water. Okay, fine. Then goes to the code pad and presses the hash key. In the cockpit, the buzzer sounds for three seconds. The captain pulls the toggle switch and maintains it in the unlock position. The green light on the code pad comes on Access is allowed. The amber open light comes on when the door is opened. Thank you. Now let's see how the system works when the crew needs to lock the cockpit access door. First, when the door is closed, its normal state is locked. But what happens when the purser does not apply the normal procedure for requesting cockpit access? I don't think this is the normal procedure. I prefer to lock the door. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. It's a bit suspicious. The captain moves the toggle switch to the lock position. The open light remains extinguished. Now, if we look at the code pad, the red LED is lit, confirming the door is locked. Be careful. Automatic door opening, the code pad and the buzzer are inhibited for five minutes. The purser realizes that cockpit access is inhibited and has to use the interphone to contact the cockpit crew. Yes. Sorry, Captain. I have forgotten the cockpit access procedure. I just wanted to see if everything was okay. No problem, Sally. I'll open the door. The door can be opened by moving the switch to unlock position, which overrides the previous locked situation. I'm sorry. Everything is okay? Yes, all right. This example shows how to proceed in the case of crew incapacitation. The purser calls the captain through the interphone. Captain, it's Sally. But there's no answer from the captain. So the purser tries another way of contacting the cockpit crew, requesting entry by pressing the hash key on the code pad. The buzzer sounds for three seconds in the cockpit, but still no reaction from the cockpit crew's side. So the purser tries another call on the interphone. Captain, captain. Do you read me? It's Sally. Obtaining no response, she decides to use the emergency access procedure. On the code pad, she enters the emergency code, then presses the hash key. This triggers the timer for 30 seconds. The green LED on the code pad flashes, indicating imminent unlocking. In the cockpit, the buzzer sounds continuously, and the open light flashes, also indicating imminent unlocking. When the elapsed time is over, with no action from the cockpit crew, the door goes into unlocking sequence for five seconds. The green LED on the code pad remains steady. The open light comes on for five seconds during the unlocking sequence and the buzzer stops, indicating the door is unlocked. 
The purser now has five seconds to enter the cockpit. The cockpit door has a spy hole for a visual check from the cockpit of a person, stay just behind the door. But, if installed, a cockpit door surveillance system CDSS allows also the flight crew to identify a person in front of the cockpit door, and in addition, to survey the hidden cross section in the forward doors area. It is composed of three black and white video cameras, an LCD screen, one video push button installed on the pedestal cockpit door panel, and one cockpit door video push button switch installed on the overhead cockpit door backup panel. This push button switch allows to manually deactivate the CDSS. The LCD screen is mounted on the rear cockpit wall to display the view from the three cameras. Pictures from camera 1 are shown on full screen and pictures from camera 2 and 3 are shown on split screens. Note: If entrance to the cockpit is requested via the keypad, the CDSS automatically activates from power safe mode to camera 1. Pressing the video push button allows, when the screen is blanked, to display the camera 1 picture, when the camera 1 picture is on, to display the camera 2 and 3 pictures, and when the camera 2 and 3 pictures are on, to return to camera 1 picture. Note, if no action has been taken for 5 minutes, the screen goes blank, in power safe mode. The A320 has four cabin doors, one forward and one aft on each side. The left forward door is normally used for passenger boarding. Each door is equipped with an escape slide. There are four overwing emergency exits, two on each side of the aircraft. An overwing escape slide is provided on each side of the aircraft. Each one is stowed in a compartment at the wing route. The A320 has three cargo doors. One forward, one aft on the right side of the aircraft to access the cargo compartments and a bulk cargo door located at the rear bottom right side of the fuselage providing access to the bulk cargo compartment. There are four small doors below the front of the fuselage to give access to the avionics compartment. The pilots can monitor the status of all the doors as well as the escape slides using the ECAM door oxygen page. The door symbology is the same regardless of its type. The symbol is green when the door is closed and locked, as shown by the right forward cabin door in the example. The symbol is full amber when the door is opened, as shown by the left forward cabin door in the example. Watch how the cabin door slides are armed. The slide labels appear in white beside their related doors, indicating that the associated slides are armed. Doors are closed and locked, all the slides are armed. Note, the wing escape slide labels are always displayed as they are always armed. There are two cockpit sliding windows, one on each side, providing emergency exits from the cockpit. The cockpit sliding windows are controlled by the window control handle. 
we will look at a video clip to demonstrate the opening and closing of the cockpit window. During the preliminary cockpit preparation, you check that the escape ropes are properly stowed above and behind each sliding window. The ropes are long enough to be thrown out through the cockpit sliding window and used for escape. You will learn in detail how to operate the cabin doors and their slides in the cabin chapter. However, we will take this opportunity to look at a video clip to demonstrate the opening and closing of a cabin door and the arming of a slide. Here, as an example, the right forward cabin door. For closing, push the gust lock and move the door rearward towards the frame. With the help of the door assist handle, pull the door in. Lower the control handle. The locking indicator turns from red to green, which indicates correct locking. In order to arm the evacuation device, the safety pin with the red flag must be removed and stored away. Push the arming control lever down. The red armed, green disarmed indicator must show armed. 